uh, with that, I'll uh, open it up for any questions you might have. Chief, to clarify, when he was shot, was he making a move toward officers? You said he had turned away and was looking back. I guess to be blunt, was he shot in the back? Uh, we don't know where the rounds were fired uh, in terms of landing on the suspect. That's something that the autopsy will have to reveal. But I believe it's fair to say that he was partially toward, turned towards the officers, which prompted the officers to believe, as a result of his hands being down by his waistband, um, concealing what they thought to be a firearm, that he was preparing to turn towards them and fire. Chief, one of your critics out there says that we talked to you, said that your officers operate under a shoot to kill MO when it comes to gang members. What do you say when you hear stuff like that? But we don't have any type of policy, procedure, uh, whether written or informal that causes our officers to believe that they need to shoot to kill. Our officers, like officers around the state of California, are trained to fire their weapons when they perceive a threat, a life-threatening uh, incident, and uh, they fire their weapon to eliminate that threat. Uh, that doesn't mean that they're going to shoot to kill, but it does mean that when they do use their firearm, it's intended to stop that immediate threat. How many uh, rounds were fired? Uh, that information is not going to be released until the autopsy. Um, what we try to do is uh, not to get out front on the number of rounds fired uh, or the position of the rounds fired until the autopsy is released so as to not taint that part of the investigation. But we would anticipate that the coroner will be uh, releasing that information very soon. Did police know kids were inside this, on the other side of that wall and in essence they could have, could have hit the kids inside the house? Yeah, there, there was information um, based on conversations that they had with the, the mother uh, that, in fact, there, there were two uh, children inside, one 11 years of age, one 14 years of age. Uh, they were aware that they were inside the residence. Um, however, when the officers fired at those individuals, uh, they did not believe that they were presenting any type of danger to the children inside. That means that the officers never thought that they were going to put the kids in danger? Uh, based on the position of the officers and based on where the suspect had positioned himself, uh, the officers did not feel at that point in time that they were placing anyone else in danger by firing at the suspect. Um, understand that there are times uh, when an officer has to make a split-second decision. This was one of those cases. Uh, it is during that time that they process a lot of information in a short period of time. Part of that is to try to minimize any type of threat as a result of them having to fire their, their weapon. And in this instance, uh, based on what the officer said, they did not feel that, uh, that there was anyone else threatened by their actions uh, and that they needed to fire their weapons. Did the officers know who was on the other side of the wall? Uh, in terms of? In terms of the, who was on the other side of the wall where the suspect was. Uh, I, I don't know what you're referring to. We were to. told that, the, that um, I'm sure this is what he's talking about, that there was, the 14-year-old actually saw the incident happen. The, 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 the suspect left the door and the kid was on the other, other side, side of the, the door. door. So did the officers know who was on the other side of the door? Uh, the officers had information that the, uh, as I understand it, that the two kids were inside of the house. That had been talked or told to them by the mother. Uh, but neither one of those, the 11-year-old or the 14-year-old or the mother, actually saw the shooting or were in a position to see the shooting. How far was the suspect from the wall? You know, the, it would be uh, the, the the rounds and the positioning of the officer in 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 positioning with the person uh, with the suspect in this case. The rounds weren't going into the wall in which the officer were, or which where the children were. None of the rounds went in the direction of the door where the child was. But you don't know exactly how long was the the wall from the suspect. Not exactly. I mean, measurements are, are, we take exact measurements on it. It's being recreated uh, now. We're still, we're still recreating that, but uh, it was, it was, it wasn't a, it wasn't a great distance. So where do you believe the kids were inside that house? It was, they were transitioning. You know, it would be hard, difficult to tell exactly when, at what, at what point during the shooting they were at. So you don't, so we don't, you guys don't know where they were exactly when the shooting happened? We know approximately, but not exactly now. Did the rounds hit the house? I'm sorry? Did the rounds hit the house at all? No. no. The rounds didn't hit the house? No. How many other people were inside the house? 
and it's the two children? No. The ex-girlfriend was the mother of the two children? Yes. Does this look like uh, suicide by cop? Very much so. Yeah, very good, very well good. You know, we're, we're always hesitant to try to determine what's in the state, uh, the, the state of mind of the individual that we end up shooting. But based on the statements that he had made to his girlfriend earlier that evening, uh, that it's about time for me to die, uh, that is <coughs> an indication that, in fact, he was not willing to be arrested, go back to prison, or perhaps had come to grips with the fact that he was going to lose his life that night. We don't know that for certain other than what he said and based on his actions at the time. But we do know that this individual was clearly, had demonstrated in the past that he was violent. Uh, that he, based on her statements, based on observations of the officer, uh, that he was frequently armed with a firearm. What can you tell us about the officer? Like, are you going to name him? And what's their, how long have they been with the department? Yeah, we will, absent any, um, absent any threats as a result of this to the officers, we'll be releasing those names within the next seven days which has been our, our standard practice when requested. And I'll assume that as a request, and we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and release those in the next seven months. How long were the officers been with the department, though? Uh, one of them was four years, and the other one was six years. One of the officers was had been with the department for six years, the other one uh, four years. And both are on paid admin? Bo both of the officers, which is a standard uh, procedure, are on paid administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation. Have they been involved in other uh, officer-involved shootings? Uh, one of the officers has. Uh, the other one has not, to my knowledge. Which one? The six-year the six veteran? The, the one that's been on four years. Four years? Yeah. He's been involved. Was it a fatal shooting? Uh, I do not know the circumstances of that. The, the girlfriend told the B that she uh, felt she uh, was helping police to lure this man out by following him up. Is there any truth to that? Uh, there were some, um, I, I'm aware of some of the statements that she had subsequently made. Um, those conflict um, considerably with the statements, tape recorded statements that she provided our detectives. Okay. She also said that, that um, her boyfriend, or Lonnie Graham and others ran from the house. Was it just him running out of the house? Yeah, uh, the only one that left that residence besides the female would have been Lonnie Graham, and uh, both of those were witnessed by the officers to leave. So you don't know exactly what, what was the thing or the object that the suspect had in his hands? Well, we did locate a cell phone, a flip phone, uh, that was silver, shiny, that was lying next to him uh, at the time of the shooting. Uh, it is believed by our detectives that that is probably the object that he had in his hand when he was confronted by officers, the object in which appeared he, he appeared to be trying to conceal. Okay, thank you very much.